Hello and welcome to The Good, The Scars and the Rugby in partnership with our friends at Allianz. This week we should actually be calling it The Grand, The Slam and The Rugby because we have some Grand Slammers in the house. I'm very excited after a brilliant weekend for the Red Roses and we had two matches either side, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, Italy, uh, but our Grand Slam champs for a fourth year in a row. And one win short of the consecutive wins record in all of the rugby universe, Emily Scarrett and Mo Hunt. Um, are you, for the first time in nine million years, not in the same room sharing headphones? Yeah, we branched out from each other. We had a little moment yesterday, actually, where we obviously were saying goodbye and whatnot. And we were like, oh, my God, we've been together for like six weeks. Obviously, we spent a lot of time when we used to live together. Um, and now potentially we're not going to see each other for a month or so. So I FaceTimed Mo on the walk to the shop this morning when I was off to get some milk. And then as, I, as we were saying goodbye, she was like, should we FaceTime every day? <laughs> so that might be a bit overkill, but yeah, it'll be sad for sure. Uh, just a short hello. How are you? What's the weather like? You know, just a courtesy check in. Um, Emily, are you um, feeling withdrawal symptoms from not inhaling as much dry shampoo or are you just spraying it in the air so that it feels familiar? <laughs> No, I'm not actually. It was quite nice this morning. <laughs> that was a good one, though. That was nice. I like that. <laughs> Look, guys, she's got no comeback. There's none because there's a lot that went into my hair this morning as well. So, well, I'm loving the scrunchy game. I'm spotting a trend here. The two of you coordinated on the red, right? Is that red? Yeah, ish. Yeah. The victorious red roses. Um, uh, I love the. The BBC article at the end of the game said the clock went red, Scarrett kicked the ball into touch and pumped her fist before scrum off Natasha Hunt jumped into her arms in celebration. <laughs> Do you love my delivery? Um, so, I mean, literally, it was a bit like a fairy tale. Did it feel like that? Or was there a part of the game that felt like, oh, what? what's happening here? You're probably better to answer this, guys, because by the time <laughs> I came on, it wasn't really a game that we like wanted to do it was just yeah when by the time I came on it was just defense I think France had the ascendancy so I think you're probably the better one for this one I think it like we always knew it was going to be really tough and it was like the first obviously however many minutes they scored pretty much straight off the bat didn't they like we can see the couple of penalties kick to the corner and then that all of a sudden they're over the trial line and you're like oh bugger this isn't the ideal start but at the same time I don't think we ever felt like stressed um, and that's quite a nice feeling. Like, obviously, we knew we were in a game. We knew it was tough. Not everything goes your way, but it does it in, in like big, big games like that in, you know, against tough opposition. Um, but it did always feel like we were under control. Like our forwards were unbelievable. They were so mega. They got through so much work. Um, obviously, the driving more was like the weapon, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, it was it was awesome, obviously, to finish the game like that. Never quite sure whether a scrum half is going to pass you the ball or whether they're going to kick it off themselves. Sometimes they like to do that bit themselves. So I was there if she needed me. But um, <laughs> yeah, like every everyone was screaming, like, kick it off. And we were like, yes, we know. But like sometimes the clock, obviously, that we can see doesn't always marry with the ref's watch. So we just wanted to double check that is time dead because the last thing you want to do is kick the ball off, start celebrating, and then they're like, French line out. <laughs> so we just wanted to make double sure. But yeah, it was really cool. And then everyone obviously like charges on. There's a really nice picture I saw of, it must have just been after the whistle. There's like basically everybody's hugging in like twos. So they've just turned to the nearest person, jumped on them. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a cool moment. And you had to watch the first 60 minutes of that from the sideline and warming up in between, Mo. Um, what was your favourite moment of it all? You were boot watching, weren't you, Mo? You couldn't see much down there. <laughs> yeah. So where we were sat was like, it was so random. It was down like seven steps. And then basically our eye line was the pitch. So it was really difficult to actually see anything of the game. It was, I don't know where the French subs were either because they didn't seem to be sat where we were. So yeah, we, we got like um, pretty rubbish seats for that in the house. Um, but it was just amazing. Like the atmosphere, I love playing France away. Like it's so hostile. And I just absolutely adore it. Like they boo you every time we went to Walmart. So when we were at Leicester or Gloucester, we'd be clapped around and people would be like cheering, whatever. And here, anything we did, we'd just be booed, like no matter where we were on the pitch. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, pretty special times. Like the girls smashed it for the first bit and 
like I said, like it was a very different job for me coming on. Um, very defensive. We just ended up like personally, I ended up kicking the ball off the pitch because I was like just trying to stunt like the French momentum that they were getting. Um, but yeah, like it, we kind of knew that it was done. I think like seventy four minutes on the clock, being up by that, and obviously. Emily Scarrett's boot was amazing, wasn't it? Like off the tee, she was unbelievable. So helped us a lot. Um, but yeah, like it was just, it was class. The whole thing was class. Probably like would have liked to play a little bit better to win it like in real style, but it doesn't matter. Like you just got to find a way to win those games. And and we did, like Scar said, the girls were amazing and the whole thing was just unbelievable. So you didn't, so wait a minute, you were sitting in, a, a substitute dungeon for most of the match and was there a screen down there or I mean were you guys just kind of peering over the, I didn't see this I didn't realize you you were hidden <laughs> yeah no completely hidden and like because I'm quite an excitable person I don't know if you picked that up before but like every time they did something good we literally I not everyone but like me and a couple of the girls would like sprint up the seven steps to be like come on the girls like and just try and give like a little bit of energy because like I said there wasn't a lot of um, English support out there and it was just like full French booze like the whole time so any time that there was any kind of momentum swing we tried to get on top of it but yeah like uh, my calves were ruined before I even got on the pitch because I was up and down the steps so much just trying to actually see what was going on. That is brilliant so <clears throat> immediately after the match I just saw all of the jugs where did those come from? With Was that beer? <laughs> that was from our analyst, I think. So um, Callum had, because I don't think anyone had really thought about beers in the changing room or drinks after the game. And I think Cal, because he had been up amongst it a bit more, he'd gone and fetched a few jugs just from literally the bar outside where where everyone else was and brought them down. And then so there's this picture of mid to the like this massive jug of beer. Um, but yeah, that was quite funny. We didn't get any mind. I think it was just... Really Marley. Marley somehow managed to have a pint. She, was she always sniffs it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it did look a bit like a beer festival kind of jug, you know. It's, I was like, "That's Steph. That's that's gonna, you know, that's gonna keep you busy for a bit. It's not just a a, a quick one." Um, so, how much did it mean afterwards? Um, what was the feeling like? Was it a bit kind of? I mean, you guys were so dominant throughout the entire championship. Um, was it as sweet as you'd kind of hoped it would be? Because you, I mean, Emily held off on us. We weren't allowed to say the word France for how long, though? I mean, this, uh, we were we were in denial of this very big game on the horizon. No, I know exactly. I think um, the whole tournament, everyone was talking about the England-France finale and like you, you don't want to write everyone else off. I think it's so important not to. Like everyone's come like so far through the tournament and I think people are putting in like hella performances at the minute and it's a privilege to be where we are I think we're kind of step above at the minute and hats off to the investment that everyone's put into that program and the league and everything else because it's playing it's paying dividends at the minute but yeah it was um it was pretty special to obviously get out there and get the win and the whole week was a bit edgy wasn't it Scars? like they they just seemed to be like another level and the detail was just coming in slightly more and everyone was getting a little bit more like, are we going to do it? And I think everyone had full belief. Like we, we, that win is a habit. Like we know where we're at. I think we, everyone's so bought into how we're trying to play and everything else that no matter who slots in or who's on the pitch, you know that you're still getting the same outcomes. And yeah, it's, it's pretty special times. Um, Emily, did you know you were going to captain early on in the week or was this something that kind of was only confirmed later? Um, obviously, as soon as Santa got ruled out, um, you kind of had an inkling because I've been named as the vice captain of the squad. Um, so you kind of have an inkling that that perhaps might happen. But yeah, then um, spoke to Mids, I uh, can't remember when it was, to be honest. And he obviously, and then he was asking around like vice captains and things like that. So um, yeah, it's something that just was a bit procedural, really. It wasn't necessarily something that was, was made a big deal out of. Um, go on, mate, what you, what you want to say? Wait, did you did you get a say on the vice captain? You didn't pick me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outraged. I'm actually outraged. No, the not, not of... a, it's just a conversation, you know, around the <laughs> leadership people are within that group, etc. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The minister of dry shampoo affairs has something to say about this. Crazy. She has something to say about everything. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, like obviously, look, it was gutting to lose Santa. She's such a huge part of our squad. She 
you know, the amount of work and effort that she puts in, you know, aside from being out on the field for 80 minutes most weekends is is huge. So it was a real shame, obviously, not to have her out on the pitch. But actually, once we heard that she was able to still come out, she had to do a, like a, a fitness test to run the tee on, because I, I assume you guys saw, but she ended up being tee girl. So we'd just done captain's run at the stadium and I'd, I'd just done my kicking bit. And I was walking back to the sideline with my tea and she went, Skaz, Skaz, can I borrow your tea? And I was like, yeah, this is weird, but sure. So I gave her my tea and then she went, Doc, Doc, and just ran off to the other side of the pitch with this tea, proving that obviously she was able to run essentially to the other side of the conversion was on the other side of the pitch with this kicking tee, then trotted back. She was like, yeah, yeah, I can do it, yeah. <laughs> so that was quite a nice moment. But um, yeah, so to have her involved like that was was still really good. Um, and obviously she was able to lift the trophy at the end, which was thoroughly deserved for her. Yeah, brilliant to see. And <clears throat> I mean, still a very important job. I mean, the the duration of the tea chats that went down in Leicester, it looked like you and Shauna were having little parties there on the side of the pitch. I was like, can someone just put a microphone on Shauna Brown so we can hear what's happening down there? So, I mean, it's this is an important job. It is an important job. And I, I'm a relatively relaxed person, so I don't want it to be too, too stuffy at those moments. So, um, yeah, Shauna and I had a few um, laughs because it was when I'd hurt my eyes. So I was like, mate, how, how puffy is it? She was like, no, no, it's fine. Two kicks later, she came on, she went, getting bigger mate it's getting bigger <laughs> um, so we just had like a little bit of it's basically terrible chat but it's just something that puts a smile on your face in, in between those moments um for center i was very aware that i didn't want to because normally i pick the tea up and then i throw it so i'll pick it up but then i'll just give it a little toss to whoever it is so that they they catch it and then trot off but i thought like for my neck if i throw it at her and she has to kind of jolt somewhere in it you know so i basically was very i was like you okay. go Put, putting it back into her arms <laughs> Um, but yeah, she did do it. Well, I mean, as experienced as you could hope your tea girl to be, literally. Um, so there was, we need to talk about the game just a little bit. Um, Lark's player of the match performance, absolutely stunning. Just, I know you mentioned the forwards, but as a South African, and I was watching the match with Anthony Watson and he was horrified at me absolutely like reveling in all of those malls, but I mean, those mall tries were spectacular and like absolutely unstoppable. Um, I, I completely enjoyed it. And I, I don't know if, Skaz, you guys in the back line get as much enjoyment out of that. Uh, but as, um, as a fan of the, you know, the, the, the bigger um, people in the front actually scoring some tries, that was a, a delight for the purists. <laughs> we definitely do get enjoyment out of them, especially in a tight game like that. Um, if you could see some of the wide shots that are taken, like when they go over, all the backs are in the air, fist pumping. Um, yeah, we get right behind that. But yeah, they were so good. I'm look, I'm not going to pick to pieces how they did it, but because I have absolutely no idea. But it, they're, they're, they've put so much work in over it. Obviously, we've got um, Lewis Deacon, our new forwards coach, um, probably what as still under a year in, I think, Deeks is. Um, but he's done awesome work with those guys. They put in so much work as well. Um, Lark's been brilliant. Um, obviously, you know, I think she hit all her line outs this weekend. There's some back balls that, you know, even as a, a very uneducated back can fully appreciate how spectacular they looked. Um, so yeah, they, they were awesome. Um, and actually at, at times you were like, oh yeah, stop, this will be, it's coming to us type thing. And then they just managed to just shift somewhere or move somewhere, change the, whatever they do and go again and yeah. I mean, fair for play to them because you could see as well, like they'd get back up and they'd be exhausted, or we'd get a penalty and we'd be like, right, back in the corner. And then you could just see this, like, keep having to take these sharp intakes of breath because they knew they had to go again. And so, as I say, they put in so much work that, yeah, they, they fully deserve it. You were giggling for a moment there, Mo. It's just <laughs> scuzzy not having a clue about it. It just cracks me up. Like, 101 caps and she doesn't, she doesn't know how to talk about them all. I love it. But no, like they, they were incredible. It's just for me, like the patience that they had, like Skaz said, when it's stored, it was just, there's a moment where you can just spin that ball out or you can break off the back, but the patience they had to stick in it. And I li I've literally been in one mall in my life and I came out my hair, it was even more disheveled than normal, <laughs> like everywhere. I was absolutely exhausted. So the fact that they do that time and time and time again is just next level. Like it's, yeah, very, very impressive. Um, we asked a lot from them and, and they fully they fully delivered and 
super glad that it was one of the forwards that got player of the match. I think it could have gone to quite a few of them. But yeah, Larky was was brilliant and has been all, all um, championships. So great to see for her. Marley Packer always looks like she comes out of a tumble dryer. At the, at the end of the game, it looks like something had literally churned her up and spat her out. And she's like, whoa. And there's just like hair everywhere. But I mean, so fierce and so brilliant to behold on the pitch. But I always look at her after a match and goes, geez, I mean, tomorrow, I don't know what's left of her after a game. We have got an absolute golden back catalogue of pictures of Molly Packer like that. Some of them are unbelievable. They're so good. There's one springing to mind. And me, mate. And me. (laughs) We'll see if we can get that on the group. No, I don't Um, think think that's fair. (laughs) Um, yeah she's she's unreal like she actually she pulled up a bit in the warm-up didn't she Mo she hurt her calf or something and um I just I hadn't seen it but I heard mid to the side of you swap in and you think oh my god that's only that's you know that's for Packer and she's so important to what we do I think she would have got definitely a few turnovers in that game obviously subsequently she's been listed as one of the nominees for Six Nations player of the tournament which is unbelievably deserved but yeah, she's mega, and I think her hair is kind of the, um, the the kind of the I don't know what the right word is, but it explains how much effort she's she's put into what she's just done, and it's the the physical representation probably of what's going through her head at that at that time, which is just like, oh my god. Yeah, she's she's everything for that team. Like she just galvanizes everyone. Like she says the right things at the right times, and she never lets up. Like whether that's training, whether it's in a match, like no matter how exhausted she is or how much she looks like she's been thrown out of a tumble dryer, you know that she's just going to give everything that she's got. And I think, like, I, I absolutely love playing with her. Like, we've played under 20s with her all the way through and to be back on the pitch with her is something special. But, yeah, as Skaz said, like, fully deserved nomination for player of the tournament. And to be fair, I think she's in with a shout of winning that as well. Definitely. But now, wait, <clears throat> Skaz... Mo's dragging you for um, your forward chat. So when you are speaking to the forwards in the little huddle about discipline and things, I mean, give us the give us a sample of the little <laughs> scars chat to the forwards. To be fair, uh, I speak to the referee before the games if I am the captain, and I just make sure that they're happy to speak to one of the forwards. So Abby Ward in this instance, so just like are you, happy to speak to Abby about you know. It kind of nuances at a line out and intricacies at a scrum like because that is I'm not charging in from 13 to try and talk about something I haven't got a bloody clue about um so yeah Abby Ward p- picked up a lot of my slack I think at, at the weekend for stuff like that there was one occasion where obviously we got put on a, a on a warning about discipline so that that they're easy messages to give because everyone knows what what's coming you just take a breather and then try and go again but um yeah as I say Abby Ward definitely picked up a lot of my uh, my slack on those True leadership is all about knowing who to delegate to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's very good at it. You're a very good leader, Scazzy. Aww. You're putting yourself you're putting yourself down and you don't need to because yeah, we've got we've got hella leaders across the squad. Like there's so many people that have like come to the front and for me as well, obviously being out and coming back in, like Sarah Byrne, I think's massively stepped up. Zoe Harrison, like huge responsibility now in that group. Marley Packer, Abby Ward, Emily Scarrett, like players across the board that are just really leading and it like it's amazing to see like I said like everyone just seems to like click and everything's just so like integrated and it just seems to work it's it's quite seamless really but people definitely look to Skaz I think you saw how much love she got on the 100th cap like in camp it was even more than everything that was going out and yeah everyone has a lot a lot of time for that girl. So what was said at half time? Tell us about the chat. I should really remember these messages, but I just always sometimes struggle to remember them. And that's not because I just, you're always so in the moment with things like that. Um, well, not in the moment, actually, maybe as it would appear to be. Um, I think it, it was very much just more of the same, I think, wasn't it? It was, you know, big messages were being driven around discipline, obviously, um, because I think for both sides of the ball, that was where the, the teams were getting their opportunities. You give away a penalty kick to a corner or you kick 40 metres down the field, all of a sudden you're in a bit more of a stressful situation. So I, I imagine that was probably a message that they received as well at, at half time. So we drove some messages around that. Um, and then it was just about kind of kicking on, making sure that we were still sticking to the boring process that no one wants to really hear about that that's the actual message, but that is the message. It's been kind of the message all week, just not getting bored of 
doing what we do and, and then doing it really, really well. Um, and the second half was sticky. I'm not going to lie about it. Obviously, we got, so Harrison got carded. So then we're trying to bring the tempo right down to kind of survive that period with without her. They then got a yellow card. So they probably tried to do exactly the same thing. So it probably wasn't box office second half. But mm. obviously, there, there comes a point in the game where you've just got to judge what's required at that time. Um, and yeah, for us, it was probably just taking it down a little bit um, and then managing through that period. Yeah, and the squad depth is just absolutely brilliant. I mean, you guys just being able to, you know, bringing Helena in to 10 um, when Zoe got carded is just so effortless almost now. Yeah, it really is. And it could have been Helena, it could have been Holly Aitchison. Like any of those could have just slotted in and, and slid across the back line. And like the girls are unbelievable, the skill set. Sorry, Skaz is actually a really good 10 as well. I know you're joking, but we played um, Litchfield together and Skaz was my 10. Other than sighing every time the ball wasn't right to her hands, that used to kill me. But other than that, she was brilliant. Yeah, like the, the squad depth's amazing. Like the girls are unbelievable. And yeah, it's a very, very talented group to be part of. You guys now meet up with France again on the 15th of October in Fungarai. In New is that Zealand, what it is. is that has it has this featured anywhere? Has anyone said anything about this? Does, is it in the back of your mind that, that that was? I mean, that was an important match, but the next one is going to be World Cup important. I don't think it. Obviously, like we've known that for a long, long time, we? especially with the delay of the World Cup and stuff. But, but also, we know every time we play France, it's it's big, it's brutal, and it means a lot. And that's almost irrelevant of what competition or or whatever you're playing them in. We, uh, Mids and I had to do a press conference after the game and one of the journalists asked Mids, oh, you know, what was the chat in the the um, the circle at the end of the game? Was it now like all eyes towards the World Cup and da 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 And then Mids kind of looked at each other and was like, well, not yet. Like, <laughs> we've got a night to celebrate. We've got, you go, we've all got to go back to club. We've then got a period of time off and then we'll, you know, reset and, and look at look at that sort of stuff. So, Look, we all know it's there. We all know it's coming. But at the same time, you've, you've got to make sure that, one, you enjoy the moments. Two, that you take a bit of time to then step back from it all as well. Because if you stay on it and you're thinking about the World Cup, the two minutes after the final whistle's blown when you just won a Grand Slam, like, that's ridiculous. You, you're you going to be all over the shop. So um, I think Mids is is very kind of keen on on that sort of stance as well. So we just kind of looked at each other and was like, no. No, no, nothing's been said about the World Cup in, in the circle after the game. Um, did Skaz Astasia um, make an <laughs> appearance uh, in Leicester or in France or both? In both. It was epic. <laughs> and Sarah Byrne has a fantastic video of it. I don't know if you've seen this yet, Skaz. She was, showing me, she was showing me on the bus on the way back. It is brilliant. Singing into a wine bottle, Skazastasia going full in. It was amazing. Which Skazastasia song is the one that you feel the most? I'm out of love. Such a classic. Oh my god. I don't gosh. know it. Can you sing it? <laughs> Honestly, my pipes are bad at the best of times, but this morning they will be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was so revolutionary tough. actually finding Anastasia again in our lives we've got Sarah Burns thank for that that was unbelievable thoroughly enjoyed and um and who was the who was the leader of the the after party um did Zoe Oldcroft bla break plates again like where are we where does the post uh, Grand Slam celebration of beyond 2022 rank against some of the other stories that we've heard mm. We weren't involved with the plate smashing yeah. and I'm still gutted about it because it just sounds epic. Um, I don't know, it was, it was a good night to be fair, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good night. I think it's it's different. I think I think I spoke about this before. Like obviously in the autumn and last Six Nations, we were very heavy COVID. So actually you didn't go out. So you just stayed in the team room and you were all together. So I guess whatever happens, happens in there. Whereas obviously now we, things are a bit freer. So you were able to go out if you wanted to. So you probably... You break up a little bit. Some people want to go out. Some people don't. Some people have gone to bed early, all that sort of stuff. So um, it was probably a bit more um, disjointed in that sense. Not the night definitely wasn't disjointed. It was still a lot of fun. But um, in terms of the group sticking together and there was no kind of Greek Greek party like Zoe Oldcroft was hosting last time. <laughs> 
And Mo, you um, had to get up um, early to do the BBC Sport interview. Um, did you just did you just pull an all-nighter or was there a nap in between? No, I think I got a few hours, which was nice. Um, but yeah, I, my alarm went off and I was like, oh, goodness. And then I woke up and tried to say good morning to Skaz. My voice sounded even worse than it does now. So I had to text my media manager being like, Emily, I'm really sorry, but my voice is slightly gone. Like, is that going to be okay? And she was just like, yeah, no stress. Um, but we went to the races. We did this card game that basically is, yeah, it was just good fun. But I was kind of leading that, so I was getting really excited, and that's why my voice went. Um, but, yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it was fine. It was all good. It was all good. That's why your voice went. Mm. <laughs> it actually she was. Does, that- she does get very, very into it. Very into it. <laughs> Yeah. You have to, you have to. I was in um, Greenwood Pub in London, and I have to say that the um, watch parties in town were very well attended by people who were really interested in the actual game. In fact, they were so not interested for our little Q&A beforehand that they rocked up in time for kickoff. They were there for the match. They were not interested in like any kind of chat, and we just did, did the, the little uh, Q&A post-event. But I heard that <clears throat> Nolly and LJ from the Tryhards had 80 people rock up to the Pack Horse and Talbot. So uh, love that. I mean, that is a proper Very effort um, of fan zoning back here in, in England for, for those of us who didn't get tickets to, uh, to Bayonne before it sold out. Um, it was brilliant to be at the watch along, but it was even better to just get Shauna Brown's live unadulterated reaction to everything that was happening on the pitch because there were plenty of loud gasps and um, inadvertent kind of jerks. And she was really, really into the game. Um, But it was just, um, I wish that, like, somehow I wish that you guys could have had a live view of kind of where we were and what we were seeing, because it was just so brilliant to be in a pub that usually is packed out by men. Um, and there were kids and loads of women and everyone was just like absolutely reveling in uh, what you guys were doing on the pitch. And I spoke to some people from Greenwood afterwards and they were just absolutely stunned and impressed. And they were like, we need more of this. We need all the games. We need people to do this uh, next year for the Six Nations. I've been loving seeing people like Ali Donnelly saying this was probably the last time we had an amateur team playing against um, a fully pro team last week in Leicester and that from next year things will undoubtedly be very different. So it does feel like um, kind of we, we experienced something over the last few weeks that in a few years time I think people might look back on and say remember when it was still like that, remember when Aoife posted the photo of how she was seeing patients the morning after that massive Leicester game. Um, and back here, it definitely felt like a like a nice turning point. Like, kind of, we're on to something, and the momentum really is there now. Yeah, I really hope so. I think, like, for us, obviously, we were totally detached from it. But seeing social media posts, obviously, what you guys were doing, what Knowles and AJ were, uh, LJ were doing, um, there was, and I think Meg Jones was at an event, Celia was at an event. There was people everywhere at all these different things that, like you say, were being hosted just because of the game, because of, well, not just the game, because of Super Saturday, the all three games. Um, the Women's Six Nations, essentially. So, yeah, it was super cool to see all of that. Um, obviously, we weren't able to be there. That would have been fun as well. But, um, yeah, I, th- I really I really hope so. Um, talking about Ali Donnelly, Scrum Queen, she's got a book out, hasn't she? They've just got a book out, which I think will be a fascinating read. I'm not sure. I assume it's probably a bit of a history of, of women's rugby, given how integral they've been through it all and, and all that sort of stuff. But I think feel like that could be a, a really interesting read. But, yeah, I, I hope... This time next year, we're sat here discussing five, six professional teams, semi-professional teams that have gone at it and, and seeing the results of that. That would be, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, it was so nice. Um, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, Italy, both finishing within one and two points of one another um, did mean that it was um, it was a day where all of us expected France, England to be the close game. And yet those two both delivered with some last gasp massive moments and I love how in the Ireland one it was once again the forwards stealing the show with you guys it was them and their uh, mauling tries and I think the clip that I've seen go around social media the most must be Hannah O'Connor's long-range 
Jeez, she can kick it far, Boot. Oh my goodness, that is, I mean, that's reminiscent of um, some, oh my goodness, have you seen it viral moments. It's so unbelievable. Saw... Sorry, I, like, no, I feel ahead. like she had the distance to go from the halfway as well, like how that sailed over the crossbar. I was like very, very impressed. So um, I saw her warming up it when we played them in Leicester and um, obviously she had a, um, her training jersey on. So I saw this person basically hoof it from, I think it was about the 40 then as well. And I was like, oh, that's a nudge. And I looked back to see who it was and it was the back of them. But I could see that they quite clearly had lifters on in their legs. And I was like, no, fair play. That, like whoever that is, as in it's obviously a forward. I couldn't tell who it was from the back, but I was like, fair play. They can kick the ball. And she didn't actually kick in the game, which I thought was a real shame. Um, but I mean, Sophie de Goody can absolutely welly the ball as well. She's back row player, Canadian back row player, plays for Saris. I, look, if you're good enough and you're the best person for the job, flipping do it. Like you know, two points, three points are so important to teams. Um, yeah, would you fair play? If we if we had you and Hannah on the same pitch on the same day, <laughs> and we did a little kick off, she looks like she's got a right welly of a boot compared to mine, I feel I like we need to sort this out actually I feel <laughs> like this is a good little challenge that we need to get going that would be nice because you know this is I mean this is what I do for a living so <laughs> yeah. I mean you've got some time now right got some time got some time <laughs> Oh, I'm so I'm so there for this. If, <laughs> if you're listening and you are also there, there for it, let us know at the good, the scars, and the rugby, and we can set this up. Uh, the good, the boot, and the rugby. We'll do a special <laughs> edition of the show. We'll get Hannah O'Connor over and uh, do a little forwards versus backs. Maybe we get Sophie in as well and just make it a big party. But I I love the fact that the forwards in this final round were absolutely amazing. I- Ireland's hook and Eve Jones as well. Just absolutely brilliant. Um, had to convert um, in your brain her try in order to score the win. Um, and uh, she definitely deserves a, a shout out as well. That game, um, massive one. Wales, Italy, the one just before you guys, um, was unfortunately a defeat for Wales. But I feel like this Italy team, after the news of their contracts, have just had a bit of like it's like a fire was lit somewhere and there's a level of ownership and commitment and just grit that they've kind of come through with in these last two games that makes me really excited for them. Uh, the Azure did a little in-camp vlog um, for us when uh, f- for the stuff that I do for World Rugby. And there was a lot of singing. There was a lot of dancing. There was also a lot of cafe, cafe, cafe. I mean, the amount of coffee and caffeine being consumed uh, in that camp is impressive. But it it does seem that like they've really kind of maybe hit on to something and I'm excited to see where that goes next. Yeah, they've always been a brilliant team. Like I think they're one of the hardest to play against in terms of their determination and like how much they keep battling and fighting. Like their drift defence is next level. Their scramble defence is next level. So like we know that they've got that. They've got so much heart. They always turn up with it. And they're one of the most difficult teams to play in the Six Nations for that reason. But yeah, like it's amazing to see, like you said, that grit just come to the front. And we played probably one of our best games against them in terms of like how we went after that game and the tempo that we played at. So bless them. I think they're a bit battered going in the week after. And then they've just had that week to regroup and they've come back fighting. And yeah, you want to be playing for contracts. Like I think it's amazing to see that the investment that's going into them. And then it's, it's great to see that they've come out and got a couple of decent results off the back of it as well. Love that Wales um, managed to secure a third place after all, though. Um, that does seem like a very quick return for the Welsh Rugby Union. Yeah, big time. I think if you had told them that probably prior to the tournament, I'm sure they would have absolutely bitten people's hands off. Um, but, I mean, fair play to them. Like they've, they've taken their opportunities. They've taken you know, quite a few tight results. Um, I'm sure you know some other teams will, will look at the games against them and you know, perhaps think if they'd have done stuff differently, then perhaps they could have had the result. But um, I think winning tight games is such an important, not like lesson, but it's it's a really important um, thing to go through. Like so many teams as they're trying to progress, they're on the wrong side of tight results constantly. And it's it's almost like tipping point when you, you become the team that wins those. And it's it's tough. It's just about like managing the game, learning those those little intricacies of when to speed it up, when to slow it down, when to, you know, make these certain decisions that, that you're able to make in games. And 
So I think for them, that, that is a huge turning point in, in being able to just tip that balance and, and win those tight games. Now, I know people are voting for their player of, uh, of the championship, um, but I'd like your moment of the championship, both on and off the pitch. <laughs> so the stuff that um, happened between the four white lines and then we want some uh, color from behind the scenes as well. Thank you, very pleased. Okay, and... <laughs> Action. <laughs> I think my off the pitch is quite easy. Like when we got back to the hotel, we had um, everyone was in the pool and we were all just like around the, the pool, just shouting at people to jump in. Um, Did you make that song up, Mo? That sounds like a bit of you. I was a slightly late arrival out there. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. So what I, song? Like, I just I just went through the gate and obviously there's people in the pool and then all everyone looks at you and they're like, Scazzy in, 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 the in the pool, in the pool, Scazzy in the pool. In the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so basically anyone that we could see on the side we were chanting at them until they got in the pool and then a mid was up in his room so his room looked out onto the pool and everyone like saw him like someone saw him look out and everyone was like mids in the pool and then bless him he came down and everyone was just going wild so yeah it was um, my it was favorite cool. part my favorite <laughs> yeah. part of this and this is yours well because we discussed it heavily is that Marley Packer because of the knock she took pre-game she then got put in um, an air cast boot after the game so she's in a boot and a trainer and she hobbles out and we're like pack her in the pool in the-. anyway so she's like oh yeah all right fine so i've got my boot on i was like may i help you take it off so unstrapping this boot take her boot off still got her trainer on she bombs in the pool she gets out of the pool she's like scans why the- did i do that i've only got one pair of trainers with me <laughs> So she took all this time taking this boot off and just neglected the fact she had a trainer on the other foot. So good. So funny. So good. She was fuming about it. <laughs> oh, That's dear. brilliant. Uh, absolutely no regard for <clears throat> the, the foot that actually still works. Brilliant. Yeah. On the pitch highlights? If you had to pick one? Scars. Come on, Emily, Emily Scarrett. <laughs> Remember what happened over the last few weeks? <laughs> Sorry, that I was, was literally like, like, are you team, doing, are you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay, fine. My, per- my personal one, aside from a team one, would definitely be running out at Welford Road. <laughs> um, yeah, like that whole day was, well, that whole week, to be honest, was crazy. Like mad, mad crazy. Um it, the girls made it so special. Like Sunter obviously said really kind words at shirt presentation. I had an influx of like cards and gifts and things that just people, you know, have gone really out of their way just to kind of say congratulations and, and just be really, really kind. Um, Mo had decorated our room with um, balloons, bunting, fairy lights that whacked me in the head at 3 a.m. the night before the game. I was like, what the? I was like, mate. Oh, and then I was like, you're fripping fairy lights and just falling <laughs> on my head. She was like, what? What? I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Picking these fairy lights off my head at 3 a.m. and trying to get back to sleep the night before my 100th test. <laughs> but that was really cute. Like, just <laughs> loads of really cute things that, that people were able to do. And then, obviously, the day, the day of the game, um, again, like, the girls did a guard of honour, just, walk, you know, walking down those steps. An amazing reception, like, uh, yeah, I'd love to live that moment again, but it was crazy. And then obviously being presented my cap on the field by by my dad, but having mum there as well and lots of friends and family in the stand was, yeah, it was crazy. And yours, Mo? I can't follow that, can I? Like, how, <laughs> how am I supposed to follow that? No, um, it was amazing. Like, that would be up there, to be fair. Like, that reception that Scazzy got, um, being able to, like, clap her onto the pitch and stuff, like, obviously knowing what she's done for the game, like women's rugby, the levels that she's taken the game to, I think like everyone can appreciate like how amazing she is and like being there and clapping her on like that was definitely up there with highlight. Um, as was when she got lifted after there's an amazing photo of Packer and Bots that like the moment that they actually lift her up and they're both like, like this, that like, is brilliant. Um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty special as well. Um, obviously a lot of the girls get in milestone caps, but like personally for me, like it has to be going out in Gloucester, like running out there and, and being in my own hometown, like again, in front of friends and family, um, the reception that we got there as well. Like it's just super special. Like there's something about being in your ho- your hometown and we're both very fortunate that we got to live that and experience that this 
the Six Nations. Like, like I love the fact that the games get moved around and there's so much buy-in. Like definitely playing at home, this Six Nations was just next level to anything I've ever experienced. So that would be that would be up there, the crowds and um and the we should have run a we should have run a poll, shouldn't we, Merv? Which city did you prefer playing at? We can still do we're, it. We're both quite proud of obviously where we've come from. Um I did some facts while we were in Leicester that people just loved. <laughs> It was like the fact the fact of the day that you didn't want to know about Leicester. Um, so, but Mo, Mo didn't, didn't give us any of that stuff about Gloucester. So we were just there, we were in and out, out. out. There was no, there's no backstory. There was no like feeling where we were. So, just be interested to see where people preferred. You know, you had a tour guide actually, Skaz. I sent the best coffee places to go, the free car parks that you could park in when you were going out. <laughs> Yeah, the free car parks. <laughs> <laughs> important information, Alma. Important information. <laughs> wow. Okay, and then um, we have to also give props to the uh, undeniable winner of our the good, the scouts, and the rugby pool of uh, fantasy league competitors. Uh, the winner was not, in fact, Mike Tyndall. Uh, the Lord didn't even make the top five. Mm-hmm. I only say this with such glee because I'm plumbed right to the bottom. But um, congratulations to Tyrannosaurus, who's third, and Callum, who's second. And then Joe Peake, uh, who did take a photo with uh, us, Emily, uh, yeah. at your 100th match. Uh, Joe is the champion of the Good Scares Rugby Fantasy League. Um, so well done. We will be in touch, Joe. Uh, we're working on uh, on some things uh, that we're putting together for our Fancy League winner. And uh, next year, if you win the Fancy League, maybe we'll have our act together uh, to make it an, an even more compelling uh, trophy. But at this stage, it's actually just a great big shout out on the show. Um, Miss Gloucester is uh, back with Gloucester Hartbury, and they've got a Wasps at home this weekend. Big final home game of the season. Gloss seventh, Wasps bar fifth on the log. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about the serious business of the Prem 15s returning. Oh, I can't wait. Like genuinely, it's been amazing. Like we've obviously been away for two months with the girls, but um, to go back and see the girls, I'm actually buzzing. Like I think we're, we're off training until Thursday, but I'll definitely be going in tomorrow just to see everyone because uh, like, I love them. They're, they're amazing. And yeah, like we're really looking forward to it. it. We always seem to come up against wasps. Normally, we're fighting for a top four space, um, which unfortunately isn't the case this year. But doesn't take anything off that game. Like we are going out and um, we want to make a statement because we've had a bit of a rocky season this year. A um, lot of learning, like like Scar said, that tipping point about Wales being able to finish those tight games and and come out on top. We've unfortunately been the wrong side of a, a lot of results like that this season. So. Um, We've definitely got a little bit to go. And yeah, like looking forward to getting back out there with the girls. Uh, Loughborough Lightning, uh, sixth on 46 points. You guys have Worcester coming um, up this uh, round, eighth on 25 points. You're away in Worcester. Um, Emily, any any insight, anything uh, you've heard of, you can share, you know, ahead of this game? Not a lot, um, to be honest. Obviously, like Mo said, we've, we've not been in club for quite a while. Um, we'll be back in this week. But yeah, look, mathematically, it's still possible for us to make a top four. I think realistically, it's incredibly tricky. Um, so it's it's completely basically out of our control. So obviously, we'll be going to Worcester. We need to get a full five points to, to stay with it. And then it's dependent on what everybody else does. But um, my sense is the, the quality of some of those teams that are currently in the top four, they'll, they'll pick up points that they need to, to unfortunately dash our hopes. But um, nonetheless, it'll be exciting to, to go to Worcester, see some old old friends and old muckers over there and, and play that game. What you got for us, Mo? I think for about the something. neutral, yeah. So for the neutral, it's Bristol against Harlequins this weekend. So if Harlequins don't pick up any point, then Loughborough go to Harlequins. You're away to Harlequins, aren't you? At home. At home. So L- Harlequins come to Loughborough. They have to get just one point from that game. And if Loughborough get five points and they get nothing, then, oh, the possibilities. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's setting up to be a brilliant last weekend. And obviously, we go to DMP. Like, when we unfortunately don't have anything to play for. So I am well and truly in neutral now. And I just, I want that last weekend to be blockbuster finish because we've never really had it like we've not really had that 
in terms of the season before like you've always kind of had the two run away and then it's kind of been set who's going to be that top four other than the Gloucester Wasps kind of battle towards the end but yeah like I'm I'm looking forward to it to seeing where everyone you, ends up. Are you DMP away on your last game? Yeah but it's okay because we're going. Are you having a party bus? Oof. Yeah we're going <laughs> up on the day playing the game night out in Newcastle party bu- party bus back on Sunday so Strong, yeah. very strong. Full, full wow. buy-in from the squad. <laughs> Newcastle on a night out. I've only done it once, um, but I mean, I realised how old I was the next day. Um, <laughs> Chiefs versus Saracens. Let's get Exeter versus Saracens predictions out of both of you. Um, I'm going to go Exeter purely because they have a very, very strong international contingent that have been there the whole time. So obviously... Saracens have had a lot of players that have been away. Like they've got a really strong English contingent that haven't been there for a long time now, two months out of the squad. Whereas Exeter have just been there training, working hard. So I really feel like Exeter are going to come through in this last bit of the season. And I think that will pay dividends for them. I think they're kind of my outside bolter to go to the final, to be honest. They're in fourth at the moment though, aren't they? I think so, Yeah. 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 But as in, like, I, I just think that they're going to go stronger and stronger, whereas everyone else is kind of picking at the pieces on, and will be picking at the pieces, depending on how everyone comes back from this international break. Um, obviously, like, there's some battered bodies, like like we just mentioned Marley Packer in the boot just a minute ago. So whether they manage to even take the field, I think, like, Saracens are, uh, will have a, a big job on their hand to be able to go there and, and to stunt that. I think that game as well, potentially, although it doesn't mean anything for Saris in terms of, changing their position it could mean a lot because it could be a rerun of a potential semi so actually you want to go and attack that game and kind of you know puff your chest out a little bit and, and show the other that actually if this is a rerun then this is what's coming for you when it really matters so I think there could be a lot more spice attached to that game than perhaps people first first thing who's your prediction though you haven't said oh sorry on, was I sitting on the fence on the fence <laughs> come on I'm going to go... I'll still stick with Saris, I reckon. Who's, where is it? Is it where? Is it in Exeter? Exeter. We should have a bet on this then, because we've gone opposites. Can't bet on rugby, Mo. Have you not done your oh, module? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Honestly. Sorry, sorry. Ooh. So Chiefs third <laughs> at the moment, Harlequins fourth, uh, Saracens and Bristol oh. at the top. Simi Pam was team Bristol. Every Bristol player on Saturday who did something got like a massive <laughs> whoop and a holler out of her. So that was brilliant value, um, having her at the at the, the watch party as well. Um, any uh, final thoughts on what you're enjoying or going to be enjoying most now that you're back home, Mo? Uh, the thing that you hugged closest when upon your return oh my bath I love my bath like just it's just so chill like we had it I had it done what like a year ago now and I just love it so yeah that'll be the one thing I've got like a bit of a chill space like and the summer's coming outside in the garden all of it I love my house I just love my house <laughs> splish splash I was taking my bath <laughs> Okay, uh, so some uh, magnesium baths and ones with candles and everything in between. Um, Skaz is loving being back with her coffee machine because we had a whole <laughs> coffee machine performance before we started rolling. That steamer sounds like uh, it didn't miss you at all. Um, may the odds be ever in the coffee machine's favour. <laughs> I think it. I think it's broken. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, I'm so sorry about that. So sorry about that. <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, but what I, well, I'm actually looking forward to most is probably just like cooking for yourself, having a bit of autonomy over what you eat. And also, I think I might be a bit late to the party, but I need to plant my sunflowers. Plant your sunflowers? Last year, I got so excited about these sunflowers that I got uh, planted and they actually, like they're dwarf ones. They're not massive. Um, but they actually came up and they look fantastic. So I'm going to do it again because I was so into them. I was sending updates, wasn't I, Mo, on the regular? Well, you don't I'm know what to TikTok about. And I feel like we have just struck gold, mm. pun intended. Um, <laughs> I think your TikTok um, account should just be dedicated 
to the sunflowers and their progress. And then you could just do us a little TikTok every day so that we can stay abreast of uh, progress <laughs> and the, the little min- miniature sunnies. I could, I could do that. You should also know. TikTok about bacon. Because Skaz yes. is a brilliant baker. There you are. Give the is that my niche, is want. it? Sunflowers and baking? Yeah. I'm trying to find a picture of these sunflowers for you because I was so proud. Well, I mean, if that doesn't challenge some people's perceptions of women who play rugby, then I honestly do not know what will. Guys, look, that was all me. Oh, can you see that? Is it off oh, of that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah? That was Brilliant. all me. I'm very impressed. Thank okay, you. well, I mean, this solves it. We need a series, um, an update, <laughs> little progress updates. If not daily, then at least twice a week so that we can see them develop into... Uh, fully fledged uh, sunflowers uh, glorious okay. we love all of this um, so we have been the good the scars and the rugby and we'll be back uh, with more we're not going anywhere just because the uh, championship is done doesn't mean the rugby season is uh, so we'll be back with more of this stuff uh, as usual in partnership with our friends at Allianz. Uh, this is a Folding Pocket production uh, produced by Shira Kilgallen and research done by Jenna Claridge.